the boundaries between cloud and edge computing will, will, will continue to blur. Hi, this is your host, Aptil Bhatia, and we are back with our super popular predictions video series. And today we have with us once again, Jonas Bonier, founder and CEO of Lightband. Jonas, it's great to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you. It's great to be back. Of course, I'm going to ask you to share your predictions today. But before we go there, quickly remind our viewers, what is Lightband all about? I started Lightband in, um, in 2011. It's, uh, we, the mission has always been to, to, to really liberate developers to build uh, you know, systems that, 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 that scale, that's, all, all, that's, that, that's always available, that can uh, have really low latency and, and um, most of our, our customers are deploying in the cloud today, uh, and and uh, there's a lot of challenges in the cloud, you know, and we try to abstract over those uh, with a very high level programming model and a lot of tools that that, that will make it make it easier for you to shift to the cloud and be and be successful in the cloud. And lately, we've been working a lot on uh, uh, bridging that to the edge as well. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of companies want to want to. Will want to you know move closer to where the users are you know where the users are of course at the edge, so so <clears throat> so uh, this includes you know things around microservices and event driven systems and so on. Excellent. Thanks for telling us about the company. Now it's time for you to pick up your crystal ball and share with us what predictions you have for 2024. The first one, I think that, that, that you know, unfortunately, application infrastructure complexity will, con will continue to, to scale um, um, ex exponentially, I think. You know, we, we've, we've been seeing that the last, uh, you know, five, five years. It's, it's both, in, in, you know, we, we, have, we have so many products today and, 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 and they can really, you know, really, really, each one by themselves really alleviate, you know, problems but but it can be really 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 hard to navigate you know this this ever growing landscape of 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 products if you go to the cncf website for example you know the cloud computing foundation website you know you, you know you you can easily be drowned by by, by this vastness you know of, of infrastructure pieces and and it's sort of a blessing and a curse it, it's 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 you know it, it's. Uh, I'm really grateful that we are where we are today when it comes to infrastructure and 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 how it can help us. But but if you if you if you're new to the cloud, it can be really really daunting to understand first which products to use, you know, and and then you know even more how to compose them into a holistic system that that actually works. So 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 um, you know I there's more and more companies you know that are seeing that this we need we need to raise the abstraction level and. And and have a, have a better way of managing all this complexity that 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 comes from the infrastructure stack, most often evolving around Kubernetes. You know, so so um, so that's something that I I think will be continue to to see alleviated and 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 um, and help with during this year. The second thing I'll say, you know, is is that. Uh, I really think that 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 that, that you know. Uh, most people want to de deploy to the cloud today, but I think that that you know the the edge computing, uh, 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 so sort of the boundaries between cloud and edge computing will will, will continue to blur. Uh, it's 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 um, you know the last five years or so we've been really seeing a lot of improvements in 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 edge computing infrastructure. You know now now it's very mature. You, you can you, you can fairly easily deploy your your you, you know services running out at the edge and why does this matter you know of course because it's your that's where your customers reside and I think it's extremely important to to be able to 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 have your you know being able to deploy as close to your customers as absolutely possible and that does not just mean edge compute you know we talk about edge computing but but edge computing is usually stateless you know but but most or the value evolves around state, and 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 your and your customers are producing in, like increasingly more and more data out at the edge. So here it's extremely important to have a, to have a way to be able to 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 tackle that data right right where it's being produced. You know, not needlessly shipping it down to the cloud, and and do processing and then send the results back. But actually having you know the user state and compute. Always physically co-located together at the same 
you know, place at, at, at all time. Because if you do that, you have, first you can have immensely low, low latency. If you're always you're physically co-located uh, where your customer is, you can, you, you can very, very quickly, you know, you know, get back to them with intelligent answers and, and, and serve them with very low latency. But also, you know, if, if, if you always have, you know, these three things, data, compute, and, and, and user at the same physical, co uh, physical location, that means that everything can really sort of crash and burn around you. You, you can lose the, even lose the, the connection down to the back-end cloud, and you, can, and you can still continue to serve your customers, <clears throat> uh, you know, as nothing happened, fully uninterrupted. And, and, and then when the connection is restored to your peers or to the back-end cloud, you know, then you can start making use of that again, you know, for backups and for more thorough processing and so on. So, I, you know, in, when, when I've been talking to a lot of customers, you know, they, many, many wants to start taking advantage of that and, and build, you know, truly hybrid cloud and edge systems. Uh, sort of in a way, sort of extending their cloud application, you know, more further and further out to the edge. It's already happening uh, and, and many are successful doing so, but I think it will increase during, uh, during this year a lot. And uh, finally, I'd say, you know, the, the last prediction I want to I I highlight is, is, <clears throat> is uh, you know, the way you build systems for this new world, both for cloud, but also for edge and even more so, you know, for the hybrid cloud and edge. Uh, you, you know, I think that in that space, we'll see event-driven programming becoming more and more prominent. You know, event-driven programming is nothing new. It's been around for, for ages, you know, probably a couple of decades. But it's, it, it's you know, it's, it's, a, it's a model that really, really shines in this, in this, new, in this new world. And, and, and for, a lot, for a lot of reasons, you know, if you, if you model your business using events, first, it's a very natural way to model your business. You know, most of business processes and, 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 and how, you know, how, you're, how you want to model interactions and so on are very naturally modeled using events. Uh, so it has a very nice one-to-one -one mapping here, uh, which means that that's easy, probably easier for you to talk to your, to, to your stakeholders and, 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 and have every, everyone in the organization understanding the system. But also it has a lot of sort of computer science uh, you know, really good properties. Like, for example, it, it, it makes it very easy to build systems that are, or services that are fully decoupled. Uh, and, 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 that, and, that, and that matters a lot in this, in this, in this new world. And, and I'm, here I'm talking about decoupling first in time, uh, uh, which means that you can actually do parallel processing a lot, a lot of these things. And that, that, that's, of course, very important when you, when you bring, bring in things like, like, like Gen AI and, 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 and also when you really just want to, want to, want to you know, get the most out of, out of, out of your hardware, which is often quite limited out at the edge, and, and want to get results back to your users quickly. Uh, but it also, you know, allows you to do to, to to decouple your system in space, and this is also very very important because that means that you know that two services don't need to be available at the same time, in, 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 but they can sort of sort of coexist and 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 talk to each each other um, in a completely in, in independent of each of, of each other, which makes it easier to scale out the system. On many replicas or nodes or, or points of presences or, or whatever you want you want, you want to do, so 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 I, I think these are, are like my three predictions. I, in 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 a way they 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 go a little bit hand in hand in hand in hand. I think excellent. Thanks for sharing these predictions. What kind of challenges you see are going to be there this year? for the market ecosystem and even for players like Lightband. We need to find a way to, to, to liberate developers to focus on value uh, more than infrastructure plumbing and, 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 and the low level of details. You know, everyone wants to build an application you know, as fast as possible, meeting time to market, uh, uh, but but also doing that you know predictably and 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 and, and without you know, having having to worry that the system will be up you know tomorrow and so on. no one wants to wear, wear wear beepers and be and 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 so anymore so 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 I think in order to to do that you know we 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 have to find a way to raise the level of abstraction how our developers work that includes you know. Thinking about the infrastructure stack, how we abstract over that, but also providing you know programming models that that 
that you know sort of exposes the right t- sort of set of knobs in a way and the right and the right level of abstractions for the things that matter because not everything really sort of truly truly matters so i think we'll see a rise of of more of more high level platforms passes and so on that allows for this uh, another thing you know that I'm thinking about, of course, and I don't really have a good answer to is is as how this industry in general will tackle uh, AI, you know, Gen AI, and I, there, there's a lot of of promise and a lot of hope, uh, uh, but I don't think we have really, you know, seen where it will land. You know, we've already seen things like with Copilot and ChatGPT that it can do amazing things when it comes to the productivity for the for the for the developers. But uh, we just um, we, we're only at the starting point, you know. I think I think it will completely revolutionize how we how we build systems and how developers can can really bring value to to their organizations, you know, fast, you know, and 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 with with predictability and repeatability. And what is going to be the focus of Lightbend this year? We will continue working on our on on our two on our two main products. You know, first is first is Aka. That's been you know that I started the company around in two, in two thousand eleven. We've been we've been you know you know continuing to help uh, you know to add features that will help people to build uh, you know cloud systems predictably and 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 cloud systems that truly that truly scale and are always available. But uh, in November now, we, we launched our latest uh, ad- addition to that, sort of the second or chapter to Akka in, in, in a way, we're being, we are uh, call Akka Edge. We've been sort of st- allowing you to take the, your cloud model, the exact pro- same programming model in the, in the, in the, in the cloud, and, and the runtime sort of stretches out so like a data plane all the way out to the, to the edge, allowing you to... Fully abstract over over the infrastructure and all the differences, you, you know, in infrastructure stacks, out to the edge. Because out at the edge, you know, you have you have you have, you have, you have vastly different, you know, requirements, challenges, opportunities compared to the cloud, and 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 you, you often need to go about things quite differently. Uh, that also adds to the complexities. We try to reduce that by by providing a single programming model, a single runtime. From cloud to edge, uh, simply to have a developers be able to build these type of systems, uh, m- like more fa- you know, faster and 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 at ease, and 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 the and the second product we have, you know, is it's a pass called K- called Calix that really t- tries to tackle uh, what I said, you know, in my first prediction, you know, really sort of managing all the complexity that we have in in the cloud to today. Uh, Calyx fully abstracts over over all of that. You don't need to, you don't even need to think about what we are running uh, as part of the infrastructure stack. And instead, you can focus simply on build on, on writing small services uh, that are stateless or stateful, and and you know assembly or application, and then you throw it up into into the Calyx pass, and you can see it scale immensely with really really low latency and and very high availability. It's, it builds upon Akka and everything that we've been learning in the last 15 years, helping clients build systems with, with, with Akka. So, so we will continue, you know, pushing the envelope around these three, uh, around these two different pr- products, trying to tackle these challenges that I've talked about. Vinas, thank you so much for taking time out today and share your predictions with us. And I would love to have you again on the show. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs>